Very good morning to all of you. Uh, good morning and thank you to Ambassador Thierry Matu uh, of France for inviting me this morning to talk about um, uh, some of the bills that, include, uh, that are included in the legislative priority of, in Congress for women. I'd also like to um, greet Ambassador of the Netherlands, uh, Marion Dirks, and um, uh, Senator Risa Honteveros, uh, Executive Director of um, the PCW Emmett Versosa, and Sister Mary Jean Manansan, um, Executive Director of um, the Institute of Women's Studies of St. Scholastica's College. Also, um, Professor Mina Roses, and um, Gertrudes Libang of um, the Gabriela Party List. Um, Good morning to all of the other guests and speakers for the rest of the day. Um, I'd like to start with a little bit of French history, although I'm no authority in French history, and I hope I don't say anything wrong, but uh, uh, I'd like to start with this little story. In 1789, uh, women in Paris, and actually everyone, had had enough of the grain shortages in, uh, in Paris and uh, the sky-high prices of bread. So um, on October 5, a crowd of about 10,000 women, together with a few men, marched uh, from Paris to Versailles, which was about 12 miles distance, where the King of France resided. Uh, the King of France is, um, has distanced himself from the plight of the common people in Paris and is oblivious to the... the uh, plight of these common people and the grain shortages and the, 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 the prices of commodities in Paris. So uh, these women demanded from the king to address their concerns and to do something about this. And in the end, the king was forced to march back with them. Of course, he didn't actually march, but uh, uh, to go back with them to Paris. And this makes it clear for everyone to see that the government was subject to the will of the people. And all because women uh, stood together and marched together in solidarity. Uh, and it's all because uh, women had the initiative and marched. So it's now 2017 and women are still marching. While it is true that strides have been made in certain areas, and in the Philippines, individual women have risen to the highest positions and offices in the country, most women still continue to face discrimination, both personal and systematic. In France and in the Philippines, women's rights are only advanced when women fight for those rights, when women stand in solidarity with other women and move as one to ensure a more equitable world for all. This is why it is so important that laws that empower women are not only passed but fully implemented, as was mentioned by um, Emmeline Versosa. Not to the minimum acceptable requirements under the text, but in, the, in a dynamic, progressive fashion that is true to the motivating spirit of the law. For almost a decade now, the Magna Carta of Women has been part of the law of the land, and its effects has been clear. In the Global Gender Gap Report of 2016, which was mentioned by Senator Honteveros of the World Economic Forum, the Philippines ranks among the top 10 of the overall index and the first in our region, with 79% of, of our gender gap closed. This is due to an increase in female legislators, senior officials and managers, as well as professional, professional and technical workers in government. But while the government, the gender gap in pay has narrowed, discrimination and unequal treatment of women in other forms has worsened. Statistics of, harass, of sexual harassment has increased in the last decade. But nowadays, a woman need not even leave her house to be subject to sexual harassment. Many internet communities and social networks have become toxic to women. Cesspools of misogynistic content and rape jokes. Those who think that those emboldened or indoctrinated in such an environment will not let their prejudice spill out into physical action should think again. In 2013, the number of cases involving crimes against women reported in the Philippine National Police increased by 50% from 2012 
to a total of 23,865 cases, the highest ever recorded as of, as of the time of the report. Of that number, 16,517 cases were violations for anti-violence against women and children. These cases and the many more left unreported make a mockery of the principles espoused by the Magna Carta of women. But crucial in creating a more equitable world is changing the unjust structures within society that discriminate against women by clinging to outmoded patriarchal biases or by refusing to bring legislation in line with current, current science and best practices. To this end, the Philippine Commission on Women as the primary policy-making and coordinating agency on women and gender equality has been promoting what it calls the Women Priority Legislative Agenda. And in Congress, uh, we have filed bills to, to uh, address this Women Priority Legislative Agenda. Bills that fall under the WPLA are those that seek to amend or repeal the discriminatory provisions of existing laws and which propose new laws that promote women's empowerment and gender equality, and which address women and gender equality issues and concerns across the country. While every bill that helps uplift, this, uplift the status of women is a necessary step in the right direction, I'd like to discuss only a few of them this morning. First is the 100-day maternity leave law. Uh, both in, in Congress and in the Senate, uh, a maternity leave law bill has been filed, and in the Senate, it was already passed on third reading. But in the House of Representatives, it is um, still stalled in, uh, in the plenary and uh, due to delay, sometimes even opposition by fellow women. So it's not just men who oppose this bill, but also women, uh, which speaks a lot of how far we still have to go. And this bill, studies show that immense benefits brought about the presence of the mother during the first few weeks of life. Uh, at, at two months, which is the age of the baby right now in our status quo, we only have 60 days maternity leave for normal birth and 78 days for, for C-section, which means that the baby will just be two months old when the mother returns to work. At two months old, the baby can't even lift his or her head yet, and, uh, and nurses every hour and a half, uh, takes in milk for every hour and a half. And uh, if the mother needs to return to work, then, then uh, this actually significantly uh, reduces the chances of her breast continuing to breastfeed since uh, when, uh, 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 when there is no um, nursing stimulation, then the milk would run out. So eventually, the mother would have to stop breastfeeding. And this would deprive um, the, the baby of um, the uh, so-called liquid gold, the um, nutritive elements that um, the breast milk um, contains that would improve the IQ and the overall health and well-being of the child, which affects um, the health of the child until the child um, uh, becomes an adult. And this, in turn, affects um, uh, the child's economic um, um, ch chances of being more prosperous economically uh, when he or she grows up. So uh, uh, this is a very important piece of legislation. And unfortunately, a lot of legislators and a lot of people, men and women alike, don't see the relevance of this piece of legislation. They don't see how this affects human development. Uh, in the Philippines and how this plays a role in solving poverty in the Philippines and, and of course, um, inequality and malnutrition as well. Uh, as, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, even women oppose this and um, the opposition to this bill is mostly due to the cost to, to businesses. And, um, but uh, as I have um, uh, repeatedly um, said during my speeches in Congress, studies in countries that have implemented uh, and um, have um, complied with the, the uh, uh, requirement, well, the, the recommendation of um, 98 days, at least 98 days for uh, maternity leave or parental leave. Uh, they, the studies have shown that um, 
in the business sector that there was no um, uh, increase in cost and uh, there, wa there was no decrease in productivity. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in, the, in Congress, this is still stalled in the plenary and um, uh, it hasn't been calendared even if in the last couple of weeks after we resumed session, uh, we, have been, uh, we have been adjourning at 5 p.m., which means that after the roll has been called, we adjourn. So I keep on insisting that we can discuss this. Why don't we continue the debate? But uh, there have been no uh, moves for this to be included in the, in the, in the calendar and the agenda. Another um, bill included in the WPA, which was discussed by Senator Risa Ontiveros earlier, is the proposal to expand the scope of sexual harassment. So uh, we, in the Philippines, we have an anti-sexual harassment act, but um, this only covers instances in, uh, in um, uh, the workplace or in the school where there is moral ascendancy or, uh, by example, by the, the um, Employer to the employee or the professor to the student, but it doesn't cover instances where where there's some peer-to-peer -peer, uh, sexual harassment, co-workers or among students, which was mentioned by Senator Lisa earlier. So uh, it, the current law is very limited in scope and is unable to fully account for the many ways by which a harasser can create an inhospitable and damaging environment. Uh, a number of bills have been filed to amend the definition of sexual harassment, and this has been repeatedly filed in the previous Congresses, but um, it doesn't move. Uh, it doesn't seem to get past the plenary. Uh, we, we pass it in the committee level, but it gets nowhere in the plenary. This, these bills remove the requirement of authority, influence, or moral ascendancy on the part of the accused as well as explicitly including harassment committed outside of the workplace or um, education place, whether through verbal or electronic means, including offensive remarks about a person's sexual orientation. So this bill is still pending now with the Committee on Women and Gender Equality. The next is the proposal to amend discriminatory family code provisions. Uh, this has already passed the committee level in the, the House of Representatives. In the family code, there are several provisions which um, favor the decision of the husband or the man over the decision of the woman or the wife in case there is disagreement about um, the management of the conjugal property or absolute community property or uh, in terms of um, exercise of parental authority or in terms of given consent because in the Philippines, um, if, it, if the, the, um, uh, the person to get married, uh, either the bride or the groom, is um, below 25 years old, they need um, um, parental advice. And um, if, um, if um, below, uh, if um, uh, 18 to um, 23, they need consent from their, their um, parents in writing. So uh, in the family code, it's the father who gives this um, consent. Uh, and uh, even if, uh, even if the, the, the parents have been separated, in fact, and even if the it was the mother who raised the child to get married, it's still the father under the family code who gives the consent. And um, as I mentioned, um, the father who, who's, the decision of the father um, is, um, is uh, the one that prevails over the decision of the mother in case of disagreement. So this bill uh, makes the makes this uh, uh, amends these provisions in order to to make the uh, uh, to make the condition more equal between the husband and the wife, such that if there is disagreement, then uh, they should first um, have uh, earnest efforts to to achieve a, a compromise through through mediation, and then after that, uh, they would have to file a case in court. So uh, this is some. Um, what this, this bill provides. Um, and uh, uh, it has passed the committee level and is now pending at the plenary and house. Uh, there are also a number of bills. Uh, one of them is uh, mine, creating the unified crime of sexual infidelity uh, to eliminate the outdated and discriminatory division between 
infidelity by man and by a woman uh, that is propagated by the split between adultery and concubinage. Because right now, um, the status quo is um, in the revised penal code. Uh, in the revised penal code, uh, we have the crime of um, uh, concubinage and the crime of adultery. So adultery is committed by a woman um, who has um, sexual relations with a man, not her husband. Just one is, one is enough to be convicted of um, adultery. But for concubinage, it has to satisfy very strict requirements. And this is if the, uh, the, the, the husband um, cohabits with another woman other than his wife in scandalous, under scandalous circumstances. So, and in jurisprudence, um, they define scandalous circumstances as uh, not just like if you, if you bring um, the, the, uh, the, the mistress or um, the, the, the girl other than his wife um, to like, for, insta for instance, uh, to social functions, that's not enough. It has to be, uh, under, ju under Philippine jurisprudence, it has to be more than that. And um, in, uh, in another, another uh, circumstance under concubinage is if, if the, the woman other than his wife is being cohabited in the marital home, in the uh, no, conjugal home. So, <laughs> so these are very... Um, very strict requirements and in fact some some even ridiculous requirements so this is the current state of our revised penal code that until now is still law in the philippines and hasn't been amended and um whenever uh, this passes the committee and is and is brought to the plenary since um, we are the house of representatives is composed of 70 percent of men gets nowhere isn't even discussed <laughs> it isn't even taken up. So, uh, so I don't know what the chances are for this bill to be passed in the near future. Uh, uh, honestly. Uh, but of course, all of us here want this change. I hope. <laughs> I hope all of us here want, want this change. Uh, and the next is the proposal to amend Republic Act 8353, also known as the Anti-Rape law of um, 1997, and this was discussed by Senator Lisa Ontiveros also earlier. Uh, there are several pieces of legislation that have been filed with the intent of changing the definition of rape under the RPC or the Revised Penal Code. This includes a bill which I have filed based on a draft by the Philippine Commission on Women. These bills seek to bring the prosecution and definition of rape to modern standards, no longer placing the onus on the, on the victim to prove that there was a refusal or resistance or the specifics of the sexual act performed or attempted, but instead placing the focus on the consent of all parties concerned. My own bill also acknowledges and elaborates upon the circumstance which are to be considered as inherently coercive increases the age of statutory rape from 12 to 16, although as mentioned by Senator Antiveros, in the Senate it is um, 18, and removes the qualifier that would have required that the person in authority must have taken advantage or of their position in order for the authority to be considered in the computation of compensation that is due the victim. The need to amend the definition of rape has unfortunately become more pressing because of recent events. Uh, recently, the first division of the Supreme Court uh, rendered a decision uh, that held that a, an, a man innocent of rape because the victim had not submis submitted sufficient proof that she had adequately resisted the rape. Uh, although the victim presented evidence that she was um, drunk, uh, she was intoxicated and had um, uh, had no control of her faculties. That's why she wasn't able to to uh, uh, resist the rape. But this isn't, in fact, um, necessary at all. But even with this um, uh, this uh, presented this evidence presented during the the trial and reviewed by the court, the Supreme Court still ruled that uh, the man was innocent and that there was no rape because the woman had not. Um, uh, shown enough resistance to the sexual intercourse. Uh, 
So, instances like this show that the need for a new and progressive statutory landscape, laws that make explicit the principles and standard, standards we must demand from present-day society. Legislation is, in a very real sense, nation-building. And if you want to build a nation where women are freed from both active discrimination and the inertia of prejudice, then we must create laws that belong in such a nation. More than that, we must support them. For many, beneficial, well-intentioned bills die ignominiously in committee archives because there was not enough public support for them to be calendared for discussion. Uh, you know, what we can do is to actually put pressure on our representatives uh, for them to take up these bills uh, in, uh, in Congress and make these bills move. Because even if we pass it in the committee, which is uh, composed by 90% of women, when it comes to the plenary, it doesn't move. So I hope to uh, seek your support in um, uh, making this known to your district representatives and also party list representatives. Uh, the support that needs to start with, this support needs to start with women, with us, whether in France or in the Philippines. Women's lives only get better once women fight for a better life. The world does not change for women. It is women who change the world. Of course, we do this together. Women looking beyond personalities and short-term benefits. Women looking at what the next generation ought to have, what our mother's generation taught us to be important. Women not just standing in solidarity, but acting in solidarity across generations and across party lines. Because the change, the change that we truly desire, cannot be measured merely by how different things are now from how they are in the past. True change, the change that we, that we want, must be a change that progresses instead of regresses. It must be sustainable change, change for the better. And such change on a national scale has never been possible without women. If those in power desire true change, they must listen to women. When women are heard, they change the world. And until we are heard, we speak daughters and sisters, mothers and maidens, women of every age, sexual orientation or religion. We fight, we march, until the kings of the world realize that they work for us. Thank you very much and good morning. <laughs>